When we have models that involve multiple factors, like we saw when we had the 4x4 example crossing time of day with route, we also are in the same situation where we assume, in the population, the distribution of air is homogeneous. Now it's a little bit more difficult to represent this, so we have to switch things around. So let's imagine that the mean structure we observed in our sample was actually a perfect representation of the population. So I'm going to take the mean structure we have here and let's represent the population distributions. Before I do this, let's remember that in this situation, we're showing a case or a situation in the world where all of the alternative hypotheses are true. That is, we have a route effect, a time of day effect, and an interaction between the two factors. So let's start off representing what the population would look like, assuming that our assumptions are correct, but all of the H1s are true. So notice the notation here. We're going to be representing normal distributions with their own means, so mu.jk's, and equal variance, so just one sigma square. Now what I'm going to do is represent the different times across this axis. So we have 8, 8.30, 9, and 9.30. And what we'll represent across this axis is time. Now let me show you how this is going to work. Let's start off with La Jolla Village Drive. So here are those normal distributions, each with the same variance, at the means for what we observed for the La Jolla Village Drive route. Let's do the same thing for Genesee. Genesee on average was longer, and I have for each of the times the means and those distributions, again, with the same variance. Let's represent Nobel Drive, pretty close to La Jolla Village Drive. And finally, Gilman Drive, down there with the lowest time on average. Now just for clarity, what I'm going to do is spread out these distributions by putting another axis within each of the time sections. Now I want you to see why I'm doing this. It just lets us see them a little bit more easily if they're spread out in that direction. Now of course we observe these all at the same time, so we're really thinking of these time measurements as bins in this case. So all of the 8 o'clocks are in the first section here, all of the 8.30s, 9s, and 9.30s. All right, so this is a situation where all of the alternative hypotheses are true. There is a route effect, that is we can see on average the routes are differing in their time, so looking across in the time axis here. We can also see that there's a time of day effect, so if we were to take averages across the routes within each time, the average time would be descending. And we can see there's an interaction, that is the different routes show slightly different time of day effects. All right, so critically, notice that we're assuming equal variance here. So this is the populations that our model is assuming in order to draw the correct p-values. Now this is true whether or not any of our alternative hypotheses are true or false. Using this diagram, let's look at the other possible states of nature. Let's first start with all HO true, that is, with every null hypothesis being true. So no route effect, no time of day effect, and no interaction. Can you imagine where these populations would be? So here they are, and notice the notation first. So I'm representing normal distributions with the same mean and the same variance. And graphically, that's just having all of our population distributions at the exact same y value. That is, no route effect, no time of day effect, and no interaction. Let's see a situation where the null hypothesis is true for our a factor, so for the routes, we're not going to show an effect, and show no interaction, so no AB effect, but a statistically significant time of day effect. So here would be those distributions. Notice what these look like. First, the notation. We're representing normal distributions with the purely additive mean, that's because we have no interaction, and we only have one subscript we need to represent. That is, the K subscript for the B factor. So the only thing distinguishing these populations is the time of day. But again, notice equal variance. So regardless of which null hypotheses are true, our models are assuming these populations are equally variable. Let's try another situation. So HO true for B, that is the time of day effect, for AB, so no interaction, but HO is false for our different routes. So here would be one possible way this could be true. So again, look at the notation. We have normal distributions with the purely additive means, again because we have no interaction, and we're only representing the means differently on the basis of the J subscript, that is, for the route effects. Let's do one final one. Here, where we're showing the null hypothesis being true for only the interaction. So we'll show a route effect and a time of day effect, but the same route effect at each time of day. 
or said differently, the same time of day effect at each route. So here is one possible situation for this. First, notice the notation. We're representing normal distributions with the same variance, but here we actually have means for each of the combinations, but they're the purely additive means. We don't need a B terms because the factor effects are simply adding together. So notice that in any of these demonstrations, and I'll go back to the first one here, we represented the mean structure in a particular way. That is, we could have separate subscripts depending on route or time of day, and potentially separate subscripts based on the AB terms, but we always had equal variance. So regardless of which null hypotheses are true or false, our variance assumption is holding across all of them. And so we really hope that that's the true state of nature because the way we derive our p-values will depend on that assumption. So let me show you a situation where we actually don't have equal variances. That is, if we have violated the assumption, one of these groups would actually have different variants. So let me show you a situation like this. Let's assume that Gilman Drive actually had less variability in the population. So the observations we could draw from for that route will actually be more constrained. And notice that this will have consequences. When we're looking at comparisons between different routes or between different times of day, we're using a pooled estimate of the error. That is, across all of these distributions in our sample, we'll be taking measurements and we'll be taking deviations to their means as a way to get an insight into the population variance. And if we're taking averages across these different distributions, across these different estimates of error, and one of them is actually much smaller than the others, then we'll actually in some cases be overestimating the mean square error for certain comparisons or underestimating the mean square error for other comparisons. So because we have a pooled estimate of error, because we take the average error across all of our different conditions, we really hope that they're estimating the same thing. And that's where our distributional assumption comes in. So our formation of p-values, and specifically for our follow-up comparisons, will be really reliant on that homogeneity of variance assumption being true. So let's take a moment to see how we might test for heterogeneous error variance, that is, how we can use our observations in our data. Remember, we're going to be forming E sub i's, that is, within any combination, we'll be able to form estimates of the residuals, and based on these, no matter how complicated our model is, we'll be able to perform tests to see whether these conditions differ in their variability. Now what we'll be using for this example is a times to campus data set, but one where I've imposed a violation. So these are very inspired by real data, that's what the little asterisk there is to show. So what I've done is actually purposely put in violations to the homogeneity of variance assumption. Now in order to test our homogeneity of variance assumption, I want to show you two different platforms in Jump that'll be useful. The first will be fit y by x, which will allow us to look at heterogeneous error variance in one factor, that is, by cutting up our data in one way, do we show evidence that there is a violation to this assumption? And the other platform, the variability attribute gauge chart, allows us to look at all the crosses in our data. That is, we can look to see if one particular condition differs from some other condition, not just whether one whole factor is more variable than another factor.